Here it is. If you want to go out and get it, you can go out and get it. Have fun with it. But people do like it, I must say. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 In today's video, we are looking at not the shape of the earth or any argument surrounding that. What we are looking at is the fact that it is provable through evidence of old footage not meant for us to see from NASA, where it shows the thing called the blue marble. And the blue marble has been the cornerstone for the imagery and the size of the earth and where the boundaries lay for at least 50 or 60 years now. This image that you have been looking at was a, and still is a fakery. The images that you see computer generation uh, images, everything that's supposedly coming through a satellite is put through this blue marble programming so that everything ends up matching this initial image that was provided by NASA. And what you will see from this footage is that that image was fake. And not only was it fake in the sense of the actual size of the earth, not what the earth looks like, but the size, but that the earth is actually way, way bigger than you think it is. Just like the old world maps showing continents and places beyond the ice wall. I want you to look at this imagery and take a look for yourself and make your own decision. Wait, it's all Earth? Uh, yeah. You're an astronaut, Gary. How do you not know this? You've been training in school for this for 20 years, you fucking- show too much revealing detail of a false scene that was yet unproven. And finally, the element that seals their fate. Of all the footage of Apollo 11 requested from NASA over a five-year period, one gem was discovered just before the completion of this documentary. An old reel received by mistake. It contains the raw or unedited footage of the crew of Apollo 11 Michael Collins, Edwin Aldrin Jr. and Neil Armstrong staging part of their mission for nearly an hour in living color with exceptionally clear behind the scenes audio of conversations discussing the techniques used to achieve a disingenuous picture depicting the earth at a distance in order to falsely demonstrate their far journey from it and their ability to survive passing through the Van Allen radiation belts. It cannot be misconstrued that this staging was done for some other reason prior to the mission, for the reel itself is slated and dated July 18th, 19th, and 20th, 1969, the very days of the mission when they were said to be approaching and achieving lunar orbit. Furthermore, it is apparent they are in genuine zero gravity aboard the actual spacecraft, necessary to convince the mass media of their authenticity, just not any further than Earth orbit, as you will see. In this never-before-seen or heard footage, not only is the radio conversation between the astronauts and Houston Control audible, there is a secondary, private conversation taking place between the crew and a third confidential party, prompting the astronauts with what to say, when to speak, and how to effectively manipulate the camera to achieve the desired misleading effect. NASA claims that the Houston transmissions were the only ones taking place with the astronauts. Listen now as Houston Control initiates a conversation with the crew, only to find them too preoccupied with the behind-the-scenes trickery to respond. Moments pass and the oversight is picked up on by the clandestine third party who quickly prompts them with talk. Immediately, Neil Armstrong speaks. Hello, Apollo 11. Houston, Goldstone says that the TV looks so great. Over. Again, the illusion they are attempting to create is the Earth at a distance to demonstrate their far journey from it and their ability to survive passing through the Van Allen radiation belts. Understand, too, that only about 20 seconds of this raw footage was ever broadcast to the public, 
and these conversations discussing their deception were believed to be private until now. Here they discuss that these television transmissions were in fact not broadcast live as everyone believed. They were first screened and edited for playback later. All right, Janine, we just wanted a narrative such that we can, when we get the playback, we can sort of correlate what we're saying. Thank you very much. Here they discuss the fact that they have turned out the lights and have blocked out sunlight from entering the spacecraft through the other windows as to not cause any reflected light to fall onto the spacecraft's wall in the foreground. Okay, very good. Well, we shut out the sun coming in some of the other windows into the spacecraft, so uh, it's looking through a uh, the, uh, number one window and there isn't any uh, reflected light. The reason this was done is so that the truth of the matter would not be revealed. It is this. Though the federal government would have you believe that this is a view of Earth from a distance out of the spacecraft's window as it nears the moon, it is not. What they have ingeniously done is placed the camera at the back of the spacecraft and centered the lens on a circular window in the foreground, outside of which it is completely filled with the Earth in low orbit. The circumference of the window then appears to be the diameter of the Earth at a distance, with the darkened walls of the spacecraft appearing to be the blackness of space around it. That is why they wanted the interior dark and blocked out the sun from entering through the other windows. Here you can see the extruded window, probably two inches thick at the bottom. This is because the Earth's shine is coming in at a downward angle. It also causes the Earth to appear to be an irregularly shaped circle, for you are seeing the outside of the window at the bottom and the inside of the window at the top, which together form two different sized halves of a circle. Subsequently, this take was never used. As they perfected the shot, a crescent-shaped piece of black material was inset slightly into the window to create the illusion of the Earth's terminator line dividing night and day. It is uncannily convincing. During this segment, intended to be edited and played back later for the worldwide television audience, dated July 18, 1969, Neil Armstrong condemns himself as he states that he is 130,000 miles out, or halfway to the moon, as the NASA flight log also states on this date, when he is in reality in low Earth orbit of a few hundred miles. Roger, Houston, Apollo 11, calling in from about 130,000 miles out. Here, during another segment, also intended to air after review, Neil Armstrong falsely explains to the viewers how the shot is attained by putting the camera's lens to the window's glass, as it would have to be if they were the claimed distance away from the Earth. We only have one uh, window that uh, has a view of the Earth, and it's filled up with the TV camera. If the window was completely filled up with a TV camera, as he stated, then an astronaut's arm would not be able to get between the camera and the window, as it obviously does here in this outtake. South America becomes invisible just off beyond the Terminator or inside the shadow. You can also notice how the astronaut operating the camera reacted to the mistake by attempting to pan away from it. This is a segment that they believed wasn't even being recorded, much less suitable for broadcast, for the lens was being zoomed out and the scene was being changed to that of an interior of the astronauts at work and apparently the stop button popped back up on the recorder without notice. Here is the diffused work light that they used to see camera controls, but not throw light onto the spacecraft's wall. Here they remove part of the crescent insert. Finally, the iris is opened up and you can see the real location of the camera and the very bright and near Earth out the window. Here is the slate for the 19th of July, and the same shot of trickery on the 19th of July, and then the 20th, and the same misleading shot on the 20th. 
Later that evening, they were said to be walking on the moon. How can this be when they were in Earth orbit only nine hours earlier, and the moon is some three days' journey away? Furthermore, if they genuinely went to the moon, why would they be faking any part of it? Why this trickery with the window? By faking being halfway to the moon, it becomes apparent that they did so because they could not even go halfway. It thus confirms that the stumbling block to their success was the lethal radiation of the Van Allen radiation belts. Since the same equipment was used on the subsequent missions in the 40 months that followed, none of them could have gone to the moon. Hey guys, we really hope you enjoyed this video and all of the videos we have produced from the Sons of Light, where we expose the entire narrative of everything that we have been taught since we were little kids up until the current situation. Most of you realize that there is something wrong with this entire system and the life we are living at this point, but you are still unaware at how in-depth it is how much it influences your life and the effects it can have over a long period of time. So what we have done is we have put together a teaching uh, instruction documentary uh, and fun kind of webinar type of video you can catch. And what it does is it will go over step by step, run you through this entire system so that you will know at least the general game plan of everything going down and this goes from the United Nations, which we call the uh, unspiritual hub. There is a system above that, then the United Nations, and it trickles all the way down to uh, you personally, the things you learn in school, and it's vital information. Let me tell you, this documentary, it could save your life. It could save a loved one's life from false information being fed to you. It could save your life through uh, acknowledging health information that's going on. And the most important part, it is a great sense of satisfaction to be able to get a handle on life. This is after 30 years of research and me writing a book called Reason to Believe and trying to get this message out since 9-11, almost 20 years ago, getting this message. This is how long uh, we have been at doing the research for this. So we've put together this fun documentary for you and you can uh, check on the link below and uh, check in with us and watch it. You're going to love it. It's information we cannot talk about on the platforms that exist because they would just swipe it. I mean, they won't monetize us now. Um, and they would completely wipe this off. It's a reason why we can't talk about it. So all we ask from you is please help support our channel. There's a tremendous amount of work and money that goes into producing all of this. You can just simply make a donation, however much you want to, and then go and watch and really satisfy your soul, learn some information, and then tell other people about it. So we've made it as easy as possible and enjoyable. You're, you're really going to love it. This is everything you've been looking for, answers you've been looking for. It will reaffirm things, and you'll have fun joining us and thousands of other people just like you, uh, and finally knowing this information and being able to put the puzzle pieces together. Okay, guys, Dan Collier for the Sons of Light and the Master's Inner Circle. We'll see you soon. Thanks for checking out the video.